these are ordinary houses in an ordinary street, and they could be anywhere in the country. But the house I'm in is stuffed with fake goods, and your home could be too. Today, I'm going to show you a world where everything is not quite as it seems. Welcome to Fake Britain. In this series, I'm going to be investigating the world of con men and crooks who make their living at your expense. And I'm going to be showing you how not to get ripped off. Today, I am looking at all kinds of fake goods from food to fuse boxes. Coming up. Tracking the makers of fake electricals and counting the cost. And that's when we realised that the fake plug was, was deadly. Hitting the bottle, the hunt for a fake vodka that could blind you. This is injurious to health, it's going to hurt people, you need to get it off the streets. And they're even faking brand name kids' motorbikes. Because the consequences of them going up in flames when children are on them, well, I couldn't live with that. Just look at all this stuff. It's all fake. Now, you might think it's all right saving yourself a few quid, buying things like washing powder, watches, undies, sunglasses. What about more expensive items? Things like electrical goods. I'll tell you what, my first story might make you think twice. It's Christmas, and starring in the school nativity is seven-year-old Connor O'Keefe. To remind us of the very first Christmas. The next day, Connor flew off for a family holiday abroad, packing his beloved computer game, but forgetting the charger. He'd be walking along the street, and he'd be, you'd be looking behind him, and he'd be trying to walk and do his Game Boy at the same time. He just, he just was Game Boy mad. We went into a department store and bought him a Game Boy charger. And unfortunately, it was deadly. They'd been deceived into buying a fake charger. Similar ones have flooded world markets. One test found 15 out of 21 chargers bought online in the UK failed British safety regulations. It's a frightening thought. He went in search of his Game Boy. He thought he'd have a quick go of his Game Boy before his food came. And when his food came, I went in to get him. And he was... He was dead. He was just laying on the floor with, with a charger lead in, in his hand. Connor was electrocuted. When the charger was tested in London, the coroner assured Patsy only an expert could have known that she had bought a deadly fake. I can say it had a hologram, it had a Nintendo hologram on it. There was nothing to lead me believe there wasn't a, was fake or even the box it come in. The person who's responsible for that plug and probably many more, maybe is not even aware that. It, that plug killed my son. Later, we join the global hunt to track down manufacturers of those fake electrical goods. Hey, hey! Behind the netted curtain, the fake factories on our own doorstep. And all dressed up for a night with Cliff Richard. But fake tickets leave some at the gate. It's summer at the Kent County Fair. Time for a bit of sunshine and maybe even a bargain. Everybody's a winner now. But watch out for Sandra Cook's genuine stall. In fact, Sandra's an honest girl trying to highlight the duff, dangerous, even deadly goods rogues try to flog us. I don't know if you realise, we're trading standards and this market stall is full of counterfeit goods. Come inside and I'll show you some of the things. Across the country, trading standards have been inundated as shoddy fake goods are passed off and sometimes priced as the real thing. You've just asked about this Apple iPod, OK? This was bought on the internet and it is a fake. 
The problem with this one is that the sound is very, very poor. It's very muffled sound. You can't adjust the sound at all. And where's the normal life pod? You'd be able to select a tune. You can't select a tune on it. So basically, it's a waste of money. Whatever you spent on it is a waste of money. And if you went to the actual manufacturers, Apple iPod, they're not going to help you because it is a fake, and they'll tell you it's a fake. They can't help you. And while the kids think about the iPod, something for mum. Some of the perfumes that we've seized before has actually been found to have urine in it. So um, fancy uh, dabbing that behind your ears and, yeah, disgusting. And don't forget Dad. Who'd have thought it? Power tools as well. This particular power tool was found to have faulty wiring and inside where the inside should be actually made of metal, it was made of plastic, so it wouldn't take long for this to burn out. It's come on a long way from just the knock-off DVDs in the pub, which is a poor quality, to, to something that's now affecting your health and, and sort of safety of your family. Time to find out how all this stuff slips into Blighty. This is Felixstowe Port. 40% of everything shipped into Britain arrives here. That's over 3 million containers a year. But which containers hold the fake goods? With a single ship carrying over 10,000 containers, Mick Southgate's got his work cut out and uses this giant mobile scanner, just like the hand luggage ones at airports, only a lot, lot bigger. By funneling down and, and getting a, a number of uh, containers that we're, we're interested in, we can put them through the scanning process. It saves huge amounts of time. This morning, there is something odd about a container load of industrial fans from China. The scanner suggests something could be hidden inside them. They've been scanned and now we've brought them into to this shed to have a further detailed look at them. Um, if we look down the centre of the, the fan, it all looks um, perfectly OK in there. Um, looking in this end, um, here we can see the fans. The fans all seem to rotate, it all seems to be working in working order. We're concerned about the, uh, the overall weight uh, of these particular uh, fans, and they seem very heavy, and uh, so we will now go to uh, do some further examination. The 70 odd fans are someone's property, but Mick is suspicious. We'll rejoin him when he orders an inspection to destruction. The tranquil beauty of Carmarthenshire in Wales would have soon been broken if the fake goods shipped in this container had done what they were supposed to. This is Mini Moto. Few sports can rival such action and adventure for father and son. One dad saw bikes like these advertised on eBay. Reassured that they were made by Honda, he thought what a great gift for his two sons. On the net, it was a fantastic uh, page that they had advertising them, and they looked the bee's knees, to be honest though. They did not look counterfeit at all. And I've been messing about with bikes all my life. But the two mini motorbikes he bought were fakes. They had never been near a Honda factory. Trading standards discovered the seller had shipped a container load of them from China. The engines were made from chainsaws. The defendant was advertising these on eBay, um, described as Honda Mini Motors. They're obviously not Honda. Uh, Honda have confirmed that they're not Hondas. You, you think, first of all, they are not the quality that you used to with Honda. So we lamb bells start ringing straight away. You look at the stickers and you know that the stickers are not Honda stickers. And it, when you try to start the bikes then, you realise then that these are cheap imitations. You couldn't even start them. They were cheap tat, in a cheap tatty box, really. So you phone the gentleman up, um, and the response I had was that he's not here no more, he's gone back to India, and that was it. When Carmarthen Trading Standards examined the bikes, it turned out it was probably just as well they wouldn't start. I don't think I'd be exaggerating by calling these a death trap. For example, the, the chain on the bike, too much tension in it and there's no chain guard on it. And considering it's a, a chainsaw engine, a child's leg or arm could easily be entrapped into the chain mechanism. The stop button, uh, the shutdown button, which is there for emergency use, 
Um, if a child gets into trouble and, and needs to stop the engine or stop the bike in an emergency, presses this. On this bike, the button isn't connected to anything and, and therefore doesn't do anything. Uh, the actual fuel pipe, which runs here, um, and in our tests, um, it, the, the carburetor got warm, melted the fuel pipe, and, and fuel was dumped, dumped on top of the engine. The dangers are so serious that back at the track, officials now weed out all fake bikes. They are totally banned after one split in two at 40 miles an hour. Bought two motorbikes for two cracking sons. Can you imagine how I would have felt if them bikes went up in smoke like they should have gone in? I'm just fortunate that the two bikes I had were broken. I'm just glad that they were broken because the consequences of them being right and going up in flames when children are on them, well, I couldn't live with that. If I didn't fall... With the help of trading standards, Stuart eventually got his money back. The seller was prosecuted, pleaded guilty and was fined £9,000 with £15,000 costs. I'm going to have a chat with a man who knows a thing or two about fakes. Matthew. What ways have you seen people trying to deceive us? Well, the trouble is, when you go online, it's hard to tell who's telling the truth. Certainly one of the popular scams is to set up a .co.uk website. A lot of people trust that address, but actually, you can set up that website anywhere in the world in 10 minutes flat. What would be your top tips for people not to get into trouble? Well, number one, always use a credit card. If you're going to make a purchase that's over 100 quid and less than 30 grand, then a credit card means that your credit card company is jointly responsible if you get a fake good. Now, that doesn't apply if you use something like PayPal, where you don't actually have the same rights as if you're paying by credit card. Number two, check those contact details. If there's a phone number on the site and you're unsure, give them a call and see who picks up. And make sure there's a physical address, for example, for a UK address that you can verify. And number three, go and see what other people are saying about that seller or that store. Other online forums will be a place where people can report their problems. So a lot of this really is just using your, your intuition and your noddle, isn't it? Absolutely. There's also the old maxim, you know, buyer beware. Using online auction sites, it's like replying to a classified ad in your local newspaper. It's a private sale and you have to take extra care when you're parting with your money. Coming up, the shop that just can't kick its habit for fake fags. Putting a counterfeit circuit breaker to the test, what could happen under your stairs? And is nothing sacred? They're even faking cotton chips. Birmingham International Airport. Meet a team of border agency officers no longer shocked by what fakes will turn up next. Here's what they have intercepted from the mailbags of just one international flight. Coming from China, this is all going to be counterfeit. You can bet your life on it. You're never quite sure what you're going to get in them. Fake sunglasses, they'll be destroyed. If somebody can sell that for anything like half the price of a Rolex, they're into big money. I'm sure somebody's looking at this thinking, crikey, I've got a pair of those. I've paid £200 for those. Well, these probably cost more like £2 to produce in China. Somebody could actually say this is a signed shirt. They could go for hundreds of pounds. So, who is ordering all this stuff? Yeah, it's a Michael Jackson gift box. Somebody here will be will have bought these in from China, knowing full well they're counterfeit, and sell them as, as the genuine product, no doubt. The Chinese are the one manufacturing the product, but it's uh, the people in the UK making this a nice little si an earner for them. To, uh, to sell product for as much as they can. All these fakes may leave you feeling ripped off, but others could leave you cut up. These, you know, look like the genuine product. The first time many realise they are using counterfeit razors is when the shoddy blades cut their faces. Or what about connecting your head to an electric product with no fuse? Some hair straighteners here. The fuses can be non-existent. Uh, so what you can be doing when you plug that into the mains and, you, and you're doing your hair is actually you've got no protection between the mains and your head. But not all fake traders are waiting on their next shipment from abroad. Officers are going to a suburban home, churning out its own fake DVDs and selling them online. And they're about to get an early morning wake-up call. We're just about to enter this house. Um, we're hoping to find lots of DVDs. So, here we go. Police! Police! 
for the wife! Great man! Who'd have believed what's been going on at this suburban house? Equipped to churn out over £2,000 worth of fake DVDs every hour, this is a gold mine. I think we've hit the jackpot, chaps. I think we've hit the jackpot. What we found today, the, the amount of money involved, we're talking millions, um, we've had a very good hit today. We've taken out 25,000 discs and hopefully taken that site down. But I'm sure it will morph again and we will do the same job again. Later on today, we'll be interviewing the two individuals that are arrested and asking them to explain. <laughs> uh, do we need to interview them? Probably not. I think uh, the evidence is overwhelming. <laughs> but it'd be nice to have a chat with them and find out what their involvement is. Of all the fakes out there, DVDs are perhaps the ones people are most willing to buy. I think you should all look at yourselves and think, you know, this is taking millions out of the industry. You have a job, I have a job. How would you like it if we or somebody was to come in, undercut your job, and cost you your job. These two could be facing a long stretch away from peaceful suburbia. Back at Felixstowe, Mick Southgate has given the green light for officers to cut open those suspiciously heavy Chinese industrial fans. If it turns out nothing inside is fake, they can't be repaired. The owners won't be happy. Mick stands by his instincts. Result stuffed with counterfeit cigarettes. Churned out in illegal Chinese factories for just nine pence a packet, somebody hoped to make a lot of money. They reckon that one in nine cigarettes in Britain is fake. This is quite a sophisticated concealment. You've seen that there are cigarettes inside the, the fans. The profits um, that they're making from this have to be significant to make all of that, plus the shipping costs and, and the distribution costs, uh, worthwhile. Uh, a full container of cigarettes could, could uh, perhaps bring a million pounds worth of profit. We think we've seen it all and then something else comes along and we get, a, we get something different that we haven't seen before. Tests on fake cigarettes have found rat droppings, sawdust and arsenic in them. With higher levels of nicotine and tar, they are more addictive and may contain twice the amount of cancer-causing agents, assuming there is something in the pack. You buy 200 cigarettes off somebody off the, off the street corner, you think, oh, what a good deal, take it home, open up the packaging and you won't even find any cigarettes in there at all, but you will find a lump of lead and a bit of polystyrene, which probably is the ultimate con as far as counterfeit cigarettes is concerned. This is a good example of uh, cigarettes concealed in wood, uh, and there were millions of them uh, in a container uh, that came from the Far East. Back at the warehouse, a good day for Mick and the team, a bad day for someone waiting on that container load of fans. Now we will pass this, this case on to our colleagues, our investigation colleagues, who will be looking to try and trace the people that were, that were funding this importation. Um, and they'll be looking to go out and hopefully make some arrests in the UK. Remember that terrible story of how seven-year-old Connor was electrocuted by a fake Game Boy charger? Well, terrifyingly, there are still a lot more dodgy electrical goods out there. Seven-year-old Connor was killed by a fake Game Boy charger. What horrifies his mother is that thousands of fake electrical goods are shipped into Britain every day. Just listening to me, I'm hoping that it will just make people think twice, like, before they do buy things, like, um, just to stop and really check, because looking at them ain't enough. If it's, say, just one, other kid, then that's something, ain't it?
Working undercover in China for the real manufacturers, Kevin Harris poses as a buyer and locates the counterfeit factories. Alongside Chinese authorities, Kevin hopes to shut them down in raids like this. About £30 million worth of fake electricals make it into Britain every year. We have conducted something like 300 raids. We've confiscated and had destroyed over 10 million products. It's the tip of the iceberg, you know. We're, we're fighting a losing battle. These products, well, they're made from plastic that you wouldn't even make a Barbie doll from, quite frankly. So let's compare the real thing with something knocked up in one of these factories. So in your fuse box at home, you will have devices like such as this. This one is a genuine product with all the certification markings that you can see. And you can see how sturdy it is. This one is a fake one made in southeast China. You can see how shoddy this one is and gives absolutely no protection whatsoever. When I've posed as a, as a buyer of counterfeit products in uh, southern China at the trade fairs, they will ask you what product you want, they will ask you what brand you want, they will ask you what country they go into because this will give them the idea of which certification marks to put onto the product. Whether they comply or not, they don't care. The risk is fire and injury and death. We've come to an electrical testing lab where authentic products earn their certification. So how dangerous would this fake circuit breaker be under the stairs of your home? So what we're going to ask this device to do is exactly what it said on the label. We want people to think of this as the protective device in their home and their office. And from our previous experience, uh, what we need to do now is to walk behind the bulletproof glass to a secure area. OK? Later. We find out what happens when we throw the switch on the fake. After watching that, you might be tempted to pour yourself a stiff drink. But be careful, you've guessed it. Yep, the fakers have been targeting the drink business. And this bootleg booze could be on sale in a shop right near you. Up and down the country, thousands of bottles of seized fake vodka stack up in trading standards warehouses. It's left two people dead and many more seriously ill. In Cardiff alone, recent raids uncovered 14 corner shops selling fakes of the reputable Glen's vodka. In this particular case, we've got over a thousand bottles of vodka behind me. We picked all of those up in one day. I was surprised at the, the, the amount, but also surprised at the 14 retailers were prepared to buy this stuff out of the back of a white van with no VAT receipt, no nothing, and then bless them, they'll come to court and plead that in all innocence they did this, they had no reason to suspect there was anything wrong. It beggars belief really that they were expecting the magistrates to believe them. This shop alone had over 600 bottles of the stuff. Fined £400, they also lost their alcohol licence for three months. Now we are in student territory here, but it's extraordinary to me, popular though that may be with students, that a shop of this size felt it was sensible to stock that amount of vodka. And this wasn't even the city's biggest haul. What they uncovered at this factory was more 1920s Chicago than 21st century Cardiff. A complete fake vodka factory. This was full-scale production of, um, you know, illegal alcohol. We're talking four or five thousand litre vats of just the raw ethanol. There were pallets and pallets of these bottles waiting to go out. Uh, we'd understood, we'd had information to, you know, to suggest that HGV wagons had already left the depot. So I just, I, well, I'd hate to put a, you know, a figure on how many bottles had actually left and been put in circulation. Scientists discovered they'd faked East European Christoph vodka, but this had 120 times the legal amount of methanol. Tasteless, but deadly. 
You can't detect methanol. It smells very much like ethanol, but the consequences are that it can um, make you feel um, dizzy. You can have a, um, pains in your stomach. You can actually then become sick. Um, but if you do drink a lot of it in the one go or over um, a short period of time, then you can actually result in respiratory failure and even blindness. They're dangerous to the point where um, um, a fatality may occur. The analysis was plain and simple. This is injurious to health. It's going to hurt people. You need to get it off the streets. So obviously our efforts were directed in that area. What you've done is produce a leaflet for the retailers based on what we found at the factory, based on the labelling that we've taken. That's right, yes. With 5,000 bottles labelled and ready to go, how many had already hit the streets? Amazingly, the fast work of scientists and officers in the field meant no one was injured. The gang, out to make a fast buck with their dangerous hooch, were never caught. I'd be foolish to think we'd ended the problem. We certainly haven't ended the problem across the counterfeiting piece, if you like. Why should this be any different? And remember, fake vodka can appear normal, so be careful where you buy it. Even drinking it neat, you're not going to be able to tell, and the only way you're going to know is when you fall ill. If you ever have any doubt, don't drink it. Inform trading standards, have it tested. <laughs>
the lab is ready to throw the switch on that fake circuit breaker. Telling porkies about the pies, the fraudsters who relabeled food as organic and charged double. And how a hundred grand's worth of fake designer clothes ended up with London's homeless. Good old British cod and chips. It's a national institution. It's like boiled egg and soldiers, but John, fake cod, tell me this can't be true. I'm afraid it is, Dom. We had a complaint from a lady in Worcestershire who bought cod and chips for herself and her husband. Mm -hmm. And once she tasted the cod, she thought, I am absolutely sure that it's not cod. So she took it back to the chip shop, and the chip shop gave her no satisfaction whatsoever. So she made a complaint to trading standards at Worcester. Now, obviously, trading standards, you hear about loads of different complaints, but had you ever heard one about a fake cod? No, this is the first one on us. What did you do next? Well, we uh, submitted a piece of the fish that she gave to us and took our own sample from the fish and chip shop and we put it into our analyst, our public analyst in, in Worcester, uh, for analysis and identification. And he came back and said, it's not cod. If it wasn't cod, what was it? It was a fish called Pangasius. OK, which is obviously what you got here. This is Pangasius. It's a river fish and it's farmed in the rivers of Vietnam. I've got to say, that looks absolutely nothing like that. They are right. totally different, aren't they? So how can somebody even attempt to get away with flogging that and saying it's that? Well, when it's deep fried and battered, they look very similar. But that is five pound per kilo, yeah. and that is 15 pound per kilo. Right, so it's purely about money here, isn't it? Is it is about money, yes. We prosecuted both the, the, uh, the directors and the company, and the directors were fined £2,000 each, Ouch. and the company had to pay another £1,200. £5,200, all for masquerading a bit of cod, which was actually a panga. That's absolutely correct. Was this an isolated case? No, it wasn't an isolated case. Uh, we've also prosecuted another fish and chip shop doing exactly the same thing. And we're also investigating another two incidents in Worcestershire alone. Now, I know of other incidents that have happened in other shire counties uh, elsewhere in the country. And it, if it's happening there, it must be happening the length and breadth of the country. So if anybody ever buys something and they're not happy about it, don't think that a complaint is just good enough. Try and keep a little bit of it back. Take it to you guys and hopefully you thoroughly investigate it and then bring a prosecution. That's correct. If a nice bit of panga and chips isn't your thing, maybe you're more the healthy organic type. We spend over £2 billion a year on organic food. And this husband and wife team wanted a slice of those profits. Setting up a firm with this manager, they went into the fake organic market, repackaging ordinary food and charging twice the price. Basically, they were buying in non-organic uh, ingredients and then passing them off as organic and over the five-year period that they were doing this we've uh, calculated that the fraud is worth half a million pounds. They boasted on their Swaddles website to be organic, natural and ethical. Trading standards got a warrant and moved in. And they found Swaddles was a swindle. While our officers were there seizing um, evidence, um, lo and behold, we have two deliveries from their main non-organic suppliers who come in in their own branded vehicles to deliver on that very day. But it was the paper trail that shocked them. We found that there were bagfuls of receipts um, from their local Waitrose and their local Tesco store where they've quite clearly been going almost on a daily basis to them and purchasing um, supplies from them. And the vast majority of those receipts showed that they were purchasing non-organic produce. Among all this was a vital receipt for a Waitrose salmon costing £20. Swaddles sold it on as organic for £51. It was sent to a lab and provided vital evidence in court. We had it analysed by the public analyst and he found that it was the artificial colour that was in there. So we were satisfied that it was not an organic fish. The Swaddle Swindle now had a long list of victims. A little later, we find out how they even told Porkies about their organic pies to Britain's poshest store. Now here's someone you can trust. Sir Cliff Richard and the Shadows. 50 years in showbiz, no faking it here. 
The concert sold out months ago, but only on the night do many find out that they have been ripped off. Having paid £260 online, this couple think they bought tickets direct from London's O2 Arena itself. Oh, no, they hadn't. This was via the O2 website. And that's an interesting one. I'll tell you for why. We had an instance last year where there was a website up and it had all of our artwork on it and it wasn't our website. Night after night, ticket fraud expert Reg Walker watches the victims of fraudulent ticket websites arrive to pick up tickets that don't exist. Unfortunately, with the ticket scam capital of the world, we have cancer victims, people celebrating finishing chemotherapy, people that have just become pregnant, people that are bringing their children here, and they've all been targeted and ripped off by these people. And I just don't understand how people can do that. Most get the news at the ticket collection desk. We've just been up to the ticket office now. They said there's no tickets under his name and that this company is fraudulent. I googled the website for Cliff Richards and the Shadows tour when they first announced it and I just got loads and loads of different websites come up and I just chose one. Unfortunately, the one I chose turns out to be a rogue site. They took £200 out of our account immediately after I bought the ticket. You know, I, I hoped that they would be honourable and send our tickets, but I'm afraid they haven't arrived. When you get a website that's got no limited company name, no address, no phone number, would you give someone in the street, a complete stranger, £300 and say, meet me back here in six months and give me my tickets? You wouldn't. Why do it on the internet? And we need to break people of that habit. Absolute pleasure. Have you a fantastic day? Tonight, Reg takes heart and issues Ruth and Kevin two real tickets to see Cliff. These are genuine. Sometimes I think it's wrong to pray for things that you're going to enjoy, and I did pray. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Neil and Kate Stansfield and their manager, Russell Hudson, plying fake organic food? The scam took them to the very top of the food chain. Even Fortnum and Mason were deceived into buying Swaddle's fake organic pies. With a royal warrant over the shop, who knows who's been fooled? Back in the labs, Northampton Trading Standard set out to uncover where the pork pies really came from and they found a locally produced pie that looks identical. We had some information that they were buying in pork pies from somewhere. In a small village, they discovered an old family butcher's making delicious pork pies, but they weren't organic. By analysis by our public analyst who chemically analysed them, he confirmed that they were the same pies too. Chris Saul had no idea Swaddles were buying his pork pies at £1.30 a piece and selling them on as organic for £2.50. I'm amazed and, and well, I, I find it pathetic, really, that they've got to go and do that. So many people that are trying to fraudulently sell you stuff that, well, isn't what they say it is. And basically, the number of people that just don't know when enough money is enough. People who buy organic food will expect it to be organic, and rightly so. It, it should be exactly what it says it is. Um, and this is just a complete con. It's judgment day at court for those who ran this scam. The year-long investigation has cost £60,000. All three are found guilty of fraudulent trading. Neil Stansfield gets 27 months in prison. His wife, Kate, gets 50 weeks in jail, suspended for two years. And Russell Hudson, 40 weeks behind bars, suspended for two years. Are you sorry you lied? Any apologies for those you cheated? Those still free had nothing to say. I think the sentence um, is appropriate for the type of crime that he's committed. And, uh, you know, it sends a clear message out to anyone in business that this type of fraud won't be tolerated. Any, anything for those you cheated? Well, that tale might have left you with a bad taste in your mouth and a dent in your wallet. But let's return to a story that could have deadly consequences for you and your family. Remember that fake circuit breaker? Time to find out what would happen if it was under your stairs. This effectively is the national grid. This is the consumer. And if this fails as a, as a fake device, 
uh, there will be serious injury, there will be a fire, uh, possibly serious injury and death. This could kill, this, this could seriously injure people. Houses could burn down. Just one fake charger killed Connor O'Keefe. It was perfectly packaged outside, but deadly inside. And as fakes flood Britain, the fear is Connor won't be the last to die. It gets a bit easier, but life ain't the same. It ain't never gonna be the same. Because you don't expect to bury your children. Just when he died, something in me died, and I'm not the same person. With offenders carted off to prison, fake fags off to the local incinerator and fake electricals crushed by bulldozer, there's a lot of waste in fake Britain. Just imagine if some good could come out of it. In a single raid, Tower Hamlet's trading standards seized 100,000 pounds of fake clothing. It too should be destroyed. Before we met you, we used to incinerate it. We can guarantee you it's definitely it's... going to help people who really need it. We're going to take off the branding. And then Trading Standards said, if you can take off the branding, they're no longer a fake Tommy Hilfiger or a fake Nike. Then all of a sudden, they're neutral. You can have them, you can do what you want with them. With brand names unstitched and the charity's label stuck on, a truckload arrives at the Whitechapel Mission for the Homeless. <gasps> He's heard your prayers. Oh, so. they're going to love this. That might have That's said, that might have said a little Ralph Lauren horse on there. We took it off and we put his on. That means we can give socks away. These are fabulous. And that, thick. That story life is a Prada hat. <laughs> no, look. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Aren't they wonderful? So you're going to be able to have a shower, get whatever you need, yeah. brand new clothing, he'll figure stuff. And the good nice thing bit is... of design, I guess. It's like walking into a lantern's cave on Christmas, and uh, I, I don't know, I'm gobsmacked. I really am. It's putting me on a par with everyone else. So, yeah, this could actually change my world. You say it's not going to change the world, but it'll change mine. It's a, it's a happy ending, yeah. Beggars can be choosers. They the can. <laughs> All this stuff was going to be used for crime and for criminal activity. It ends up helping the people who most need it. Thanks for everything, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye, everyone. This is one place criminals never thought their wares would end up. Police officers, stay where you are. Tomorrow on Fake Britain, I'll be investigating the world of fake money. Cuffs, please. And that's all from Fake Britain for today. Thanks for watching. Tonight, Panorama investigates why the unemployment rate for young black men is almost double that of young white men. Jobs for the boys at 8.30. Coming up this morning, it's Homes Under the Hammer next.